All right, Larry Kruger here from the Pig and a Pickle Krug Show with the three stages of Brock Purdy hate from Ryan Clark. Oh, man, Ryan Clark. And, of course, we're brought to you by Pig and a Pickle, the best barbecue in all of Northern California. Check them out in Emeryville and Corte Madera. They're open seven days a week from 11 a.m. till 8 p.m. or until they run out. Pig and a Pickle. Go say hi to Damon and Mary. Tell them that Larry Kruger sent you. And this video is also brought to you by Underdog Fantasy. Check the link in the description. Use the promo code KRUG, K-R-U-E-G, and they'll match you up to your first $100. All right. Let's talk about Ryan Clark. Ryan Clark went on ESPN, and he ripped Brock Purdy. He said he doesn't make his teammates better. Um, And he really kind of just suggested that Purdy, unlike other quarterbacks who do make their teammates better, that Brock Purdy is a guy who's carried by the talent of Kyle Shanahan and his 49er teammates and many of the weapons that he throws to. Let's first hear from Clark ripping Brock Purdy, saying he doesn't make his teammates any better. It's they would be. I'm about to um, make a confession. Mm. The single hardest thing I had to do this year was act like Brock Purdy deserved to be in the conversations with the other people we're mentioning in that tweet. Mm. Because he was playing extremely well and operating in that offense and distributing the ball to Kittle and Debo Samuel and Brandon Ayuk, we had to continue to include him in conversations with the Lamar Jacksons. We had to continue to include him in conversations with the Josh Allen. Those things are not alike. Brock Purdy is a fine player. Brock Purdy can operate in Kyle Shanahan's offense at an extremely efficient level. Brock Purdy doesn't raise the level of play of anyone around him. And so when you talk about Patrick Mahomes, Josh Allen, Lamar Jackson, the people around them benefit from having those sorts of players at the quarterback position. Brock Purdy benefits from having the sort of players he has at the skill positions around him. And so when we look at that game against the Green Bay Packers, even with Jordan Love throwing an inopportune, inexplicable interception to end the game, I was sitting there watching them going, man, the world should be, the NFL world should be excited that Jordan Love doesn't play for the San Francisco 49ers. And we are starting, at least in my opinion, to get into the realm the San Francisco 49ers used to be with Jimmy Garoppolo, where it was, yeah, with Kyle Shanahan calling plays, we could be really good. With the players around him, we could be really good. But can our quarterback take us to the next level? And now that it's getting down to the critical football moments, to the moments that turn good players into legends, that turn good teams into teams we never forget, you're starting to see. You don't take Brock Purdy over Jared Goff right now, and you for sure don't take Brock Purdy over the two dudes on the other side in the AFC. So if you're the San Francisco 49ers, you're thinking to yourself right now, this team that we were starting to run through our quarterback better run through Uncle Shannon's nephew, Christian McCaffrey, because if it doesn't, they're going to find themselves at home again without a ring. All right, so that was Ryan Clark predicting basically that uh, or just making the statement that Brock Purdy is kind of a product of Shanahan. He's a product of Kittle and Debo and CMC, and he's just kind of along for the ride. Well, then Ryan went into this Niners-Lions NFC Championship game, predicted that Goff would outplay Purdy and that the Lions would beat the 49ers, and um, and that, you know, that was his prediction. So let's... Let's hear Ryan Clark once again with his pre-NFC title game talk because Manny changed his tune in the post game. Here, here's Clark predicting the Lions to win and Goff to outplay Brock Purdy. Well, we're going to come in here Monday morning. What are you? What's the first they're, words going to be out of your mouth? They're, go, they they're going to do it because the one thing we don't talk about with the Lions enough is how well coached they are. Oh. We want to talk about biting kneecaps. We want to talk about biting faces off, as you heard Aaron Glenn. What this team does with Ben Johnson and Aaron Glenn is they find ways to utilize who they have on their team as well as anyone in the entire league. When Brad Holmes drafted Jameer Gibbs at 12, I was like, what the hell are we doing? 
And then when he went and got Brian Branch, and then when he went and got Sam Laporta, I said, oh, I see what you're doing. Mm -hmm. And now you look at the way this team uses every single piece they have. They're very similar to the San Francisco 49ers yeah. offensively. And now defensively, it's about pressure. They'll give up yards. They'll bend. They won't break. And they want to turn you over. I believe there comes a point in this game where it's going to say, is Jared Goff more prepared for this moment and ready for this moment? Or is Brock Purdy? And I think Jared but Goff is going to be the guy that's well, ready for the moment. We've All right. There you go. And, of course, we know what happened in the game. The 49ers came to life in the second half. Brock Purdy in the second half, 13 of 16 for 174 yards in the second half. He accounted for 74% of the 49ers offense in the playoffs thus far. Um, and, he, and he ran when he needed to run. And he made play after play. And he escaped the rush. And... He beat the Lions, um, and he, he, you know, it wasn't just all underneath. He went up top to Brandon Ayuk, and he took some shots, and um, he put his his body in harm's way, and the Niners somehow came back and went 27 unanswered points in the second half to win the game and advance on to the Super Bowl in Las Vegas over the Chiefs. Now let's hear from Ryan Clark in the post game. Um, well, this is, 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 you know, is rich because look at the changes here in the post game, Ryan Clark, after the 49ers beat the lions. I agree with you. When you look at what Brock Purdy was able to do, Brock Purdy has separated himself from Dak Prescott. Brock Purdy has separated himself from Tua Tungavaloa. Brock Purdy has separated himself from guys like Kirk Cousins, from guys like Justin Herbert. He was asked in the most pressurized moment to be the best he could possibly be. And you know what magnifying glasses do, right? Think about this, huh? You, you know, you in the club, right? You vibing. And she got on makeup, you know what I'm saying? She got her good weave in, her good wig on, and yeah. then the lights come on, right? You know what the lights do? The lights yeah. show the imperfections, right? Some of them scatter, and some of them walk closer to you. When, when they were looking for Brock Purdy's imperfections, he got closer to him. Take Brock notes, Purdy notes, became more of himself. He used his legs. He played <laughs> above the X's and O's. Brock Purdy, in my opinion, if I'm looking at those two games Saturday, Brock Purdy did what we would have expected Lamar Jackson to do. Brock Absolutely. Purdy trusted himself. We agree with Brock that. Brock Purdy put the football where it was supposed to be. Brock Purdy won the football game. Down 17. Well, there you have it, the three stages of Ryan Clark. Um, you know, and at, in this last video, he's basically just saying, well, you know, Brock, he didn't he didn't come full circle and say, you know, Brock's the guy or anything. But now he's better than Tua. He's better than Prescott. He's better than Herbert. He's better than Cousins. Um, you know, so now it's like all because of the second half of the NFC Championship game, Purdy's now elevated over those four quarterbacks. So. You know, and and no, nobody put him with you know Allen. Nobody said he was the next Mahomes. Nobody said he was better than Lamar. So this whole like, well, he, is he better than those guys? No, but you know what? He was in the MVP running because the guy was statistically in the you know the top level of almost every category of passing this year, from completion percentage to success rate to doing it against pressure, to doing it against non-pressure, to doing it against the blitz, to doing it not against the blitz, to doing it in the red zone, doing it outside the numbers, uh, you know, doing it on third down. I mean, Brock Purdy was at or near the very top of the list. That is why people brought up Brock Purdy with the greatest quarterbacks in the game because those quarterbacks included, Brock Purdy were, was leading so many statistical categories. So here he is now. He's a 24-year-old quarterback. Last year, um, coming off the bench in Week 13, led his team to the NFC Championship game. This year, full season, comes back from the, the crushing elbow injury to come all the way back, lead the team to 12-5 and five in the regular season, uh, a couple wins in the playoffs, and now he's one win away from winning the Super Bowl, and the 49ers take on Patrick Mahomes and the Chiefs in Vegas. Um, you know, in a couple weeks and, and it's just amazing. It's like, you know, the disrespect of, of, uh, you know, from the national media and Clark's just one of many, but he's on, got the big platform there on ESPN. And is he going to say that 
Brock Purdy, that he was dead wrong about Brock Purdy? No. He's just going to say that now he's better than Tua. Now he's better than Prescott. Now he's better than Herbert. Now he's better than Cousins. Um, he's not going to say, hey, you know what? I had him pegged wrong or I shortchanged the kid. None of that. It's just like, hey, he played well in the second half of this game. And so now he's better than these other four guys. So I don't know. I, to me, it's shoddy analysis at best. Um, but there you have it. The three stages of, Bro of Brock Purdy ripping uh, from Ryan Clark. At first, he doesn't make his teammates any better. Then, you know what? You know, he, he maybe he does. Maybe he doesn't. But uh, he won't beat Detroit. He won't beat Goff. Goff will outplay him. The Lions will win the game. And then when the guy goes 13 of 16 for 174 in the second half and lights it up, it's like, well, we'll grudgingly say now he's better than Tua, Prescott, Herbert, and Cousins. So <laughs> there you have it, uh, a little breakdown of uh, the different stages of Ryan Clark. And I'm sure there's another stage coming because if the Niners somehow get a win over Patrick Mahomes in the Super Bowl, uh, they'll probably be a little bit more praise given to Brock Purdy, but man, he's going to have to fight and claw and earn every bit of respect he gets from Ryan Clark. That's for sure. All right. Thanks to Pig and a Pickle for being the title sponsor of the Krug Show. Thanks to Underdog Fantasy for sponsoring this video. And thanks to all you guys for supporting the Krug Show on YouTube.